Project Impact is a project that was looking at uh, human trafficking for sexual exploitation, specifically in Ottawa. It was funded by uh, Status of Women Canada, and it's a project uh, that has never been done before, so it's a pilot project. Uh, and the important thing was that uh, human trafficking is not to be has has been assumed not to be happening in Ottawa. So for for the purpose of that, it was really important that this project was conducted to see, okay, is human trafficking happening in Ottawa, or is it not? We define human trafficking to have three elements. So you need the act, the means, and the purpose. For the act, uh, there's an element of recruitment happening or transportation. Uh, the second one is the means, which is uh, there's got to be some force or coercion happening. And then the third is the purpose, and that is for the purpose of exploitation. Our research found the youth are the most at-risk population in Ottawa. So we thought, who better than youth to do this? At the same time, it's going to be an empowering piece for other youth that might want to take some initiatives in getting involved in human trafficking and learning more about it. Our film is about the knowledge that people have of human trafficking. We had decided that we were actually going to go out and talk to people to see if they knew a lot or if they didn't know. People should watch this film because it will open their eyes to what is happening in their backyards. As a group of young filmmakers, we set out to raise awareness of human trafficking in the form of sexual exploitation. Our goal was to show how naive we are in society to this. What is human trafficking for uh, exploitation? Uh, wow, what can I say? Uh, uh, it, it's an epidemic around the world, that's what it is. Um, selling your body for money. Forcing somebody into the sex trade against their will, trafficking, moving them from one place to another against their will, most likely. It's the exploitation of uh, other humans in terms of prostitution selling of sex and 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 participation exploitation of, of young girls or boys exploitation yeah. of young people basically. who are not willing yeah. on their own i think it's when you um, deceive someone from overseas women and uh, bring them on uh, false grounds to canada they come and they discover they have to do uh, sexual work it's an epidemic because young women are being kidnapped, uh, they're being bought, uh, and they're being enslaved in the sex industry. I know that because I've been in Thailand. It was my job to photograph this issue in the northeast of Thailand. Farmers were selling their children. Do you think uh, human trafficking for sexual exploitation is a problem here in Ottawa? Yes, it is. Yeah? Yes. Uh, so actually, it is. Like, they've arrested people for human trafficking. I heard it on the news. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Anywhere there are people, people are going to be taking advantage of, of those who, who don't have advantages. Why are we letting it happen? Stand up and change the cycle of human trafficking. For more information, go to pact-ottawa.org.
before making the film, I definitely had the same idea in my head that it happens overseas and in different countries um, such as Asia or Africa or in Europe and places like that. I never really took the time to think that as anywhere else in the world, it's going to happen here. I wasn't aware and made myself aware of the things that do happen in Ottawa. People think that human trafficking victims are actually foreigners or from the, um, Asia or for Eastern Europe, but actually what we found through the research is 90% of the human trafficking victims are from the Ottawa area or are Canadian citizens. I know someone uh, who has been bought and sold against their will uh, for sexual exploitation and sex, like sex jobs, so. It's, it definitely does happen within Canada. To say that this is a foreign issue is not true. It's actually happening here in the city and it's happening to Canadians. Another myth that we found is that um, Human trafficking was very often confused with uh, smuggling. So in order to be trafficked, you do not actually have to travel across a border. It's not necessary to have an element of traveling. You can be recruited into human trafficking and, and that's sufficient to be uh, uh, considered a human trafficking victim. We don't usually take into consideration that it's people in our community that are going through it. We usually tend to put it on the back burner saying that it happens elsewhere um, and that it happens to foreign people, not necessarily somebody who's from Ottawa or Canada and lives as your neighbor or as your friend. So the most vulnerable that we found are between the ages of 12 to 25 and we found there's sort of a peak of demand at the age of 15 to 16 of youth um, and that is uh, correlates with the demand of younger, uh, wanting younger girls. I want you to get that human trafficking can come in all sorts of different ways and forms and there's a lot of different ways that you can be tricked into it and you know I want you to get the awareness um, of the signs of human trafficking and how you can prevent it. Human trafficking for sexual exploitation is often a hidden crime, and accurate statistics are difficult to obtain. A recent study found that 90% of women trafficked in Ottawa are Canadians from the local areas. A guy will message a girl on Facebook and just start flirting. And if you have a few mutual friends, you already feel a bit safer. It's very efficient. He can send that same message to several girls at once. I never felt socially accepted as a teenager because I was different than the rest of the girls. When he came along, he not only gave me lots of attention and love, but he also made me feel included and accepted for who I was. That made it easy for him to pull me in and keep me for a while. It felt like home. He knew the names of my mom, dad, and siblings. Where they go to school, where they work, and where my family lives. In the game. You don't ask, you just do what you are told. Just knowing what human trafficking is would have helped me. I didn't even realize I'd been trafficked. They should talk about this from a young age in schools. They say victims come from broken homes, but I didn't. I came from a really good family, and this still happened to me. Human trafficking is here. And it's happening now. It's in our schools. In our playgrounds. It's in our homes. It's as simple as being in our pockets. These are our classmates. Our co-workers. Our family. And, and our, our friends. friends. Together, with awareness, we can create change. hear about what's going on in your backyard and that's I think where our biggest issue comes from is that we're not even looking in our own homes in our own backyards to figure it out to see what's going on instead we're just looking outwards and saying hey it's happening everywhere else but here when we really need to say hey it's most of it is here 
human trafficking is not about simply abducting or kidnapping a girl. It's really a lot more about grooming and psychological uh, manipulation over many months. And what we were trying to do in the video was showing you how close to home it is, like literally that it's in Ottawa, literally, it's by Rideau Centre, it's on the bridge, it's, it's everywhere, it's downtown, it's in all these rural areas here in Ottawa, it's so close to home because a lot of people still truly today believe it's just overseas or that it's happening elsewhere and they're sending them here. Well, no, like our video said, over 90% of the women or people who are trafficked are actually local people from Ottawa or from Canada itself. Our film is called The Friendly Fake and our film is about basically um, human trafficking but on the aspect that anyone, so basically anyone can be not what they appear to be. The whole idea that the recruiters that go out there looking for girls for their pimp seek out the most vulnerable girls. Is someone bothering you? My boyfriend called me today and he broke up with me. Two years out of nowhere. What? He obviously doesn't know how amazing you are. There was another girl. I'm such a freaking idiot. Oh, hon, don't beat yourself up over this guy. If he just up and left you like that, he never deserved you in the first place. Maybe you're right. I don't really know you. I'm sorry for dumping all this on you. Hey, it's okay. I'm here for you. Thanks. Right now, I feel like you're the only person who is. I feel so bad for you. I've been in your situation before. Do you want to go grab a drink or something? It's on me. I don't know. It's getting late. You even have anywhere to go tonight? No. Not really. Look, why don't you come with me to my house? Me and my boyfriend, we're gonna pick up some food, some drinks, and some fun stuff, if you know what I mean. Why are you being so nice to me? Because I know exactly how it feels to be in your situation, and I would appreciate someone reaching out to me. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm only here to help, no problem. Now, let's get out of here. Okay. people to gain from Friendly Fake is to know the signs, be aware of how recruiters typically come across. There's a lot of psychological grooming that's going on. So uh, in Ottawa we heard a lot of cases where um, the girls are just vulnerable because they're somehow not feeling socially included or they're feeling the pressure of gender stereotyping, of needing to live up to a certain sexual stereotype. 
uh, and being popular in a certain way. Gift giving, there's attention, um, there's affection, there could be something as simple as trips, uh, days to the spa, clothing, material based items, and so there's that monetary attraction, right? And this happens over an extended period of time, and then through there, you'll uh, sort of transform into what we call a breaking stage, which could consist of uh, psychological manipulation and abuse, emotional harm, financial control, uh, isolation from supports, family, and friends. And uh, that's that grooming process, um, throughout that process, the victim is incurring a debt, a debt to which they never knew they were going to incur. If someone's being really friendly towards you, at times it may be a bit too good to be true. When I was going through high school, I never got taught about human trafficking or um, the risks of being exploited sexually in any terms, whether it be in a relationship or whether it be um, from somebody who's controlling you in the sense of um, a trafficker. You are definitely at risk of it no matter who you are. You know, just because you live in a good home and you have a good family doesn't mean that, you know, someone can't trick you into doing something against your will. If you are in a vulnerable state to reach out to someone that you do trust rather than someone you don't really know. Be wise who your friends are. Somebody who looks like they may be uh, an okay friend, an okay like person, may not really be as um, good for you as you, you hoped. You know, teach other people about it and talk to people about it and share the knowledge that you have about human trafficking with other people. You have enough confidence in you to see the signs, help someone else see them. Help somebody else out and just say, hey, I'm here for you. I'm really here for you. If more people decided to try and create positive change in the world, then positive change might happen a lot quicker.